Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, The Crafty Quinn. My name is Megan and I love to make DIY decor out of mostly Dollar Tree items. Now if you love decor, DIY decor, or Dollar Tree, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button. Now today's video is very special for many reasons, the first of which are these water slide and transfer papers given to me by Hippo, so let's give a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. I'm going to be making some simple DIYs today as part of the Keep It Simple Sunday challenge hosted by Melissa Makes a DIY and I'm her co-host for today. More about that in a little bit though, so let's continue with this first craft. And not to mention, I have a 40% off discount code for both of these products listed down in my description box below. So first we're going to be uh, working with this water slide decal paper. This was very, very fun. So you, all you have to do is you can use this with any inkjet printer. So you just have to select the gloss paper, like, like HP photo paper, for example, gloss paper, and you just select that setting on your printer and then you just print it out like you would a normal photo. So I printed out this cute little pumpkin autumn saying over there that you see in the left corner. And here I'm just using this Dollar Tree bamboo cutting board and I'm just painting it with some plaster chalk paint. So as I mentioned, the host of today's challenge is Melissa Makes a DIY. I have linked her channel down for you below and I'm gonna be talking to you more about her challenge in a little bit. So after we have this bamboo cutting board all covered up with the plaster chalk paint, we're gonna go ahead and start working with our water slide decal. So I I was definitely nervous to use this because I've never done anything like this before, but it was really, really fun. And so you see me dipping it in the water here. I'm just using some room temperature water. But before I did that, I did take some clear coat spray paint and I sprayed it three times, 10 minutes in between each spray. And what you see me doing now is I just wet my surface a little bit because that will make it easier to transfer over. So after you have clear coated this this photo three times with the clear coat spray, 10 minutes in between each spray, like I said, then it's ready to use after you've dipped it in the water. So you see me sliding it up here because that's normally how you do it, but I got mine a little bit stuck on the corner there, so I couldn't just slide it up like you normally would. So I had to do it a little bit differently. I think maybe I used a little bit too much clear spray paint, but I just wanted to make sure it was definitely covered because the clear, spray paint is what becomes your decal essentially so once you have that off of the paper then you're going to transfer it right onto your surface and so you just want to slowly peel that off if it gets stuck like this like this did for me you just want to peel it slowly and then it's so easy to use you can move this around and what's great is if you don't like the placement you can easily move it around if your surface is is still wet so that's why it's super important to make sure you have your surface coated with some water droplets before you lay down that decal. And the little air bubbles, water bubbles if you will, are super easy to smooth out. I'm literally just taking my finger and I'm just smoothing them right down. <laughs> and then once it starts to dry is when it will adhere. So I did move this over one last time and because my surface was still wet, it was really easy to do. So this is a really, really easy product to use and I don't know why I was so nervous to use it because it was so easy. So it's just analyzing the little air bubbles so I made sure I got them all out. Hey, it's better than Mod Podge, right? <laughs> so then I just dried it off with a wet paper towel or sorry, with the regular paper towel. And then I just fixed up the little spots that I felt like needed some more paint. So next I'm taking this little oral dental sponge and I'm just using it to kind of coat the edges with that antique Waverly wax stain. And this is typically how you're supposed to use this sponge, so I'm finally getting to use this sponge the way that it's intended for. So some crafters have started using these sponges and I thought this was a cute little way to get the, the stain kind of like right exactly just around the edges to kind of coat the edges perfectly as opposed to using a regular brush. So DIY with Jazz, she she used these little dental swabs recently and that's where I saw this from so I want to make sure to give her the credit she deserves. 
So you're literally just dabbing this, and if you don't have these dental sponges, you, all you have to do is just go grab like a makeup sponge. I'm sure you could do the same thing, or you could maybe just take a regular sponge too, but it's just that it's a spongy material and that's what gives it the look that you're going for. So I think you could do this with other kinds of sponges as well. We are trying to keep things a little bit simple today. I know it's definitely a challenge for me, so thank you, Melissa, for the challenge because I definitely was challenging myself to try and keep things simple, using more household items today that most people can, can find. And, and for example, this Dollar Tree cutting board, if you can't find this Dollar Tree cutting board, just use any um, wooden cutting board that you can find. So it's really easy to just swap that out. And it's really easy, easy to purchase these decals on Amazon too. So if you want to test these out for yourself, just as a reminder, I have a 40% off code for you below down in my description box. And by the way, that discount code is actually good to use until the end of September. So you've got plenty of time. So next, I am taking my, my brush now. This is a brush that I like to just use for my stain because I feel like it has a great texture for any kinds of pro uh, projects I'm trying to distress. So I just kind of swipe over everything completely, including the, detail, the decal because I want it to, to blend in and it would look really weird if I didn't use the stain on top of this decal because then it would stand out. So I'm just kind of putting it on top of the whole project. I want it to mesh well together. So this is a little trick that I figured out. I don't know if anyone's done this before, but I took half of a wine cork and then I took half of a popsicle stick. I literally just snapped it in half and then I glued it to the back of it. And the reason I did that is so you can see there, I just needed something to help stabilize the cork because when I just glued the cork to the very top of this bamboo cutting board, it easily came off. So having that little brace there with the, with the popsicle stick was perfect to keep this in place. I haven't seen anyone do this before, so I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping this is like an original idea because I just thought of it on the spot and I'm like, I need something to help like put this cork in place. So that was perfect. So, and it was because actually I was trying to tie my raffia around the wine cork and it wouldn't stay because the wine cork kept breaking off. So this was perfect. And if you want to stabilize it even more, you can even reinforce that popsicle stick with another popsicle stick on the very back of this. If you want some extra protection there. <laughs> so after that is all added, then you just add your raffia. I just glued it kind of like crisscross on top of each other. And then I just snipped off the edges. So after you do all that, it comes out kind of looking like a pumpkin cutting board. Well, <laughs> that was really what I was going for. And I think it came out beautifully. So I highly recommend the water slide decals. So like I mentioned, today's video is part of the Keep It Simple Sunday Challenge, and it's normally hosted by Melissa Makes It DIY, and I am the co-host for today's challenge, so I'm so excited to see what everyone made. We have a playlist down for you below, so please go check out everyone else's videos. Um, so this was just all about simple crafts and just using a lot of things that you can find around your house. So definitely check out Melissa Makes It DIY, her channel, check out the playlist like I mentioned. We've got a lot of fun crafts for you today. So next I'm using Hippo's transfer paper for dark fabric. So this was really interesting because you can make all kinds of things with this transfer paper. It's kind of like you can, I mean, you can make your own merch if you wanted to. And that's kind of, it's kind of what I'm doing today. So it's the same thing. You're just going to use a inkjet, inkjet printer. Sorry, can't talk today. And you just print it out that way. And really this paper is kind of like better than vinyl in my opinion, because it's just such a, it's, it's just so easy to use. So you just, you peel it off and you just lay it down on your project and then you just use a little bit of heat and that's all you have to do. So you just peel this right off and it has just a little bit of tack to it. And by the way, you're going to want to use the same printer setting. So you're going to want to use the photo paper setting. Um, I, I think I use gloss or matte. It's, I don't think it mattered that much, but after you, after you print it out and you, and you take it off the backing, then you just lay it down. It has a little bit of stickiness to it. It's not super tacky, so you can easily move it around to where you need it to be. 
I ended up moving this down a little bit further. I didn't want it right up against the top because I wanted to give myself room with the iron to just press it down. And it did come with this, this kind of transfer sheet of like parchment paper feeling type of material. So it comes with that in this product. So that was great to help push this down. I used a medium heat setting. I think I went a little bit too high of a setting with this heat press. I think I, it probably could have worked on a low setting as well. So I recommend just testing it out with the low setting first, and then if you feel like it's not enough, then go to a medium setting if you're using the Easy Press Mini. But you can use any type of iron like this. So I just kind of pressed down and just made sure I got every edge, and then I just peeled up the paper slowly. And then there you have it, I just made my own merch. <laughs> I just love this because you don't need any special machines, you can just use this on an everyday printer. So that is why I highly recommend both of those products. Definitely go check them out, use those discount codes, try them out for yourself. So like I said, my name is Megan, this is Marcus the Crafty Kitty, I'm sorry he wasn't in today's video. Um, but he's my assistant normally, and if you're loving the DIYs, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a new upload. And if you're interested in supporting my channel even further, and would like to buy me a coffee or craft supplies, this link here at the bottom is the way to do it. And this link is also in my video's description as well. Thank you always so much for supporting us. We love reading your comments. So with that being said, let's head back to the crafts. So next, I'm just taking this regular plate, charging, charger plate, charger, whatever you want to call it. So this is another household item that I wanted to use. You don't have to buy this from Dollar Tree. You can use any charger, any, any big plate like this. You can even use just kind of like a regular just plastic plate that seems on the, on the larger size or the regular size, doesn't matter. This is definitely a larger plate and I think that was great for this craft, but I think it would still work with any type of plate. I think it's just important that the plate is just plastic so that the materials will stick to this. I'm just using some Waverly plaster chalk paint to coat this completely. I just did kind of like a thin layer because it has some wood grain to it and I thought that was really cool and I did want that to stand out so I'm not going too crazy with this chalk paint, I just wanted some of the wood grain to show through. So next I'm actually taking these wood beads and actually a um, subscriber sent these to me, Jasper Crafter, uh, Jessica, thank you so much for sending me these wooden beads. These are the Dollar Tree wooden beads, the, the, the new wooden beaded garland that they have. She found them and she sent them my way, so thank you so much for sending me those. You can use for this as a substitute, if you don't have the Dollar Tree wooden beads, you can use any wooden bead pack from Michaels or any craft store. They always have these wooden beads, and stores like Michael's do have the wooden bead multi-packs with many different sizes. So next, I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree wooden cutouts, and as a substitute for, for this, if you can't find these, I would just go online, print out a shape of a pumpkin, and then maybe like just cut that out on like some scrapbook paper or something like that, and that could be your substitute for this wooden pumpkin cutout. So I'm coating this completely with the Waverly plaster chalk paint that I've been using for this whole project so far. And we're just gonna go ahead, coat that completely, and then move on to the next step here, which is just gluing together these, these little Scrabble letters. So these little Scrabble letters, you can, you can buy them from the actual game if you want. You can go to any craft store and get some letters like that. I actually found these at Home Depot, the first pack that I had, and then the other pack I had, I found them at Walmart. So once you have them all hot glued together, I thought that was easier to just glue them together as one word so that you can easily just glue it onto the pumpkin. And I did go ahead and make a ribbon for this, and this is just layered pieces of fabric that I put together and just cinched it in the middle. And then here what I'm doing is using an antique Waverly Wax stain and just using it on the stem to give it the real pumpkin effect. <laughs> So we are going to place this right in the very middle and I feel like it's the perfect centerpiece for this craft. So 
So once you have that where you want it, then we're just gonna go ahead and add the very last embellishment. Well, okay, maybe second to last. This is just a, a piece of burlap you can get from anywhere. I'm just using some Dollar Tree burlap, so I just kind of cut that out on like an angle, gave it a nice background for the bow. And then here we're just gonna put the bow right on top. And like I said, this is actually just a bunch of ribbon. This is actually all Dollar Tree ribbon, but you can use any kind of, you can, I mean, maybe pull apart some, some plaid shirts or anything like that. You can use any just household item. You can use t-shirt fabric. You can do whatever you want as a substitute for this bow. So once you have that on there and you just want to like kind of put the little ribbon pieces out like that, <laughs> just making some last adjustments there. I think it really came together nicely. So then this was the end result. So let me know what was your favorite craft from today's video. Well, so far. <laughs> we still have one more craft to do, and I think I just forgot. Uh, we just have one more craft to do, and this is another craft using some household items. So I had a couple more bamboo cutting boards. And by the way, Teresa B DIY did send me at least one of these cutting boards, or two of them, I can't remember. But thank you, Teresa, for the cutting boards. Yeah, I think she did send me two. So I wanna make sure to give her some credit as well. Everybody that I mentioned in today's video, I'm gonna link them down below in my description box so you can easily find them. So I just painted one of the bamboo cutting boards with the Moss Waverly chalk paint. I like that color and I thought it would be great for this craft. And then we're using more of that Waverly plaster color on this other cutting board. So I haven't seen anybody else do that, do this yet with these cutting boards, but I wanted to just kind of make these pumpkins as well, but different from the first craft that I did. But we are going to use that similar trick there with the popsicle stick and half of a wine cork. And there you go, a wine cork. It's another household item. I have a lot of these corks, and you guys are probably wondering why I have so many of these corks, but I've been saving these corks over like five years. And these, so the, the corks that you always see me using are actually from the Aldi food store wine. And um, their wine is about $3 a bottle. So we got a lot for our like wedding and stuff. So we had a lot left over. So that's why we have so many wine corks. Um, <laughs> and by the way, for $3 wine, I'm impressed. Like the the white wine, honestly, it kind of, it tastes so good. It tastes like apple juice or, or just juice in general. Like I really, really liked it. But anyway, back to the craft. <laughs> so we're gonna do that to both of these pumpkin cork boards and make sure it is sturdy and secure. And it always holds it really nice. I really liked this trick that I found. So yeah, I was just making sure it was not going to move. It was definitely down all the way, just making sure it was like pushed down too. And then once we have done that to both, we are going to go ahead and distress both of these with the Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just using my distressing brush. This is just my go-to brush now. <laughs> I was trying to go kind of with the, with the grain as much as I could with these bamboo boards. I really like to make sure I get a lot of wax on every edge. And I do the same thing to the green cutting board as well. I really like how this stain turned out on the green one especially. So once we have it exactly where we want it with the stain, then we're gonna do the same technique that I was doing with the first craft, which is just kind of laying the raffia on these kind of crisscross. And I feel like it kind of gives it more of that rustic look. And I don't want it to come out looking like too perfect. It was definitely difficult because 
when I hot glued these, I feel like they were both kind of going the other direction <laughs> too much. They were just they were just standing out too much, so I did go back and fix that. The white one there, I didn't have a problem with, but the the raffia on this green one was just going every which way. <laughs> so when I looked at it, I was like, no, not quite right. So we're gonna go ahead and add one more piece of raffia to this and just kind of make some of that raffia come down more in the very middle of it. So I just did some final hot gluing on that and then there you go, we're good to go. And this was the end result and I absolutely love these. So with that being said, this is the end of the video. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it, it was so fast. So tell me which one was your favorite from today. And if you wanna check out more videos, watch them here on the left and let's keep in touch on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.